بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد continuing on in our discussion about sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and its importance as we mentioned before ikhlas is one of the conditions to have our deeds accepted and the other condition to have our acts of worship accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that which makes up uh, righteous deeds in Islam is that it is in conformity with the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so if someone wants to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly which all of us should be concerned with this we must first have sincerity to Allah and direct all of the worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the worship the way it is administered if you will or the way it's practiced the way and how we worship should be in conformity to the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam ikhlas is an action of the heart and as we've mentioned on countless occasions and our ulama the ulama of ahl sunnah have mentioned on countless occasions in the books, the books of the Salaf up until uh, this time, modern times, you'll find that they speak about matters of the heart. And they encourage us and those who read their treatises and read their books to be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we mentioned, it can be both, as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, Al-ibadah kullu ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yardahu min af'al wa min af'al al-zahir wa batin. That worship is everything that Allah loves and is pleased with from those actions which are outward and inward. And ikhlas is one of those inward acts of worship, you know, having sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if you see someone praying, you will not be able to make the judgment in general if they're sincere or not. Because this is a matter of the heart. The niya, the intention, it's a matter of the heart. And the Prophet sallallahu said, The Prophet said that verily actions are tied to the intention and everyone should get that for which he intended. Therefore, he who migrates to, uh, for Allah and His Messenger, then he has migrated for Allah and His Messenger. And he who migrates to take, some, uh, to take a woman in marriage or to gain some worldly benefit, then his migration was that for which he intended or that which he migrated for. Letting us know that the intention which is related to the heart, which is an action of the heart, is an act of ibadah. And that also our ibadah is built upon that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَى لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ مُخْلِسِينَ اللَّهُ الدِّينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the people before us. Ahl kitab the Jews and the Christians, those followers of the other messengers, alayhim afdal salatu wa salam, that they were only ordered with, they were only ordered to worship Allah alone with sincerity. And for him is the religion. That's, that's the bottom line of what they, they were ordered to do. But unfortunately, the people went astray from that. And we find this the same in our ummah today, that we're ordered with the same command. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's amr hasn't changed. The command hasn't changed. The sunnah, sunnah to Allah hasn't changed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for us good. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to worship Him and Him alone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for us for that purpose. Qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitabi al-kareem, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنْسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind and the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. Letting us know that that's our divine purpose. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. So again, it goes back to the intention. It goes back to our niyyah. 
that we have to have our niyyah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Zumr, Qala subhana, Qul inni umirtu an a'badallaha mukhlisan lahu deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that the Prophet sallallahu should say, Verily I was commanded that I should worship Allah with sincerity. Sincerity. Mukhlisin lahu. A deen. And for him is the religion. So sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, Allah has commanded us all throughout the Quran to be sincere to him. So it's upon us, if we want success in this life, as well as the hereafter, to make our worship sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to purify our hearts in that which we're doing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our many ways in which we go astray. Qala subhana. Uh, all throughout the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses us with ikhlas, with sincerity in our worship. And after speaking about those people who are destroyed, and those people who are the khasirin, those people who are uh, the losers in this life, wa'iyadu billah min dhalika, may Allah protect us from that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَأَصْلَحُوا وَاعْتَسِمُوا بِاللَّهِ وَأَخْلَصُوا دِينَهُمْ لِلَّهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَصَوْفَ يُؤْتِيَ اللَّهُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after speaking about those who were destroyed and those who are the losers in this life and the losers in the hereafter, Allah says, except those who make repentance, tabu, wa aslahu, and they rectify, they rectify themselves, wa tesimu billahi, and they hold on, or they, they tesimu billahi, wa akhlasu dinahum lillah. So they make their religion strictly and purely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're sincere. And they hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning the religion, meaning the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَا الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Verily they, or those are the ones, with the mu'mineen, with the believers. And soon, Allah will give the believers great reward. So that right there is enough incentive for us to free ourselves from hypocrisy. Make our deeds purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Free ourselves from the minor shirk and the major shirk like riya, the minor shirk, showing off, doing things to be famous and so forth. This is enough incentive to know for us that if we're sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us with the mu'mineen and bless us to have ajr, ajr and azima. You know, this great, great reward and great success. And those are the characteristics that we desire. Abi Darda, one of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, قال قال رسول الله قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا ملعونة ملعون ما فيها إلا ما ما ابتغي به وجه الله عز وجل رواه تبراني وحسن هو الألباني رحمه الله تعالى in this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that was narrated by Abi Darda or Abu Darda, 
radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. And may Allah be pleased with all the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. He said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, This dunya is cursed. It is cursed what is contained in it, or what's in it. Except that which is done, seeking the face of Allah, seeking the pleasure of Allah, Azza wa Jal. Letting us know that this dunya will pass. The car you have, the beautiful wife you have or desire, the handsome husband that you desire or have, the wealth that you possess, the buildings that you have, the books that you may contain, all your property, all your wealth, your family, all of that will go. And if, that, and if it, those things are not helping you to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then in fact they are a curse. They have no benefit. They make you far away from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But those things done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to please Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those things are rewarded. Those things are the greatest things. Those things are the only thing that have worth in this dunya. If you were to put all the other things we do, and we desire on a scale, and someone else were to have some ikhlas on the end of the other uh, aspect of the scale, there's no comparison. The stunya is nothing. It will go. But your sincerity for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and firmness on the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that will last. That will benefit you in this life as well as the hereafter. It will benefit you in the grave. It will benefit you in the hereafter. Wallahu kari al kafirun. Even the disbelievers dislike this. And even if they don't believe in this. Wallahu kari al mushrikun. Even if the pagans don't believe this. And even if the secularist and others, they don't believe this, and the atheist, they don't believe this, but that has no effect on the aqidah of Islam. It means nothing. Their arguments, their challenges, it means nothing. Because a believer is on iman. And the believer is striving, is, be, is being sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of those of the Salihun, of the Mu'minun, of the Muhsinun, of those people who are sincere, Mukhlisun. May Allah bless us to be of them, those who are sincere to Allah. And may Allah accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan. And until the next sitting, we'll continue to talk about some of the benefits of ikhlas, of sincerity to Allah. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم